Good morning, family and friends. Glad that you're here. A somber day, but a day to celebrate the life that God gave to Hilda and the life and the faith that she lived out in our presence through her life. And so it is a day for tears, but it's a day for trading stories and enjoying again the remembrance of a friend, of uh, a mom, a grandmother, and one who delighted in being a great grandmother as well. Um, there is a verse that was near and dear to Hilda's heart, and it's Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And God put a faith into Hilda in which she delighted in who God is and what he has done for her in this life and how he cared for her family as well. And many of her desires uh, were witnessed and experienced in this life, but all are fulfilled now that she's in the presence of Jesus personally. And so a great reminder of uh, one who delighted in God who uh, delights in her as well. And Bruce, her son, is going to share some words of remembrance of Hilda today, and thanks for doing that. Yeah. That mic will pick you up easily, so you don't really even have to move it. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all for coming. Um, we debated uh, having a service, but Mom had been uh, here at this church for so long that we couldn't uh, not uh, allow you to, um, sorry, <laughs> it's been nine months, <laughs> um, share in her life. Um, and so thank you so much for coming. Um, you've probably all read the, the obituary, but uh, I'll just, uh, so Hilda Ida Meyer, uh, our dear mother, uh, was 89 of Idaho Falls, passed away due to stroke complications October 13, 2020, um, at the Idaho Regional Medical Center. Um, Hilda was born, our mom was born December 24th. Uh, 1930 Twin Falls, Idaho to Ernest and Clara Meyer. She grew up in Clover, Idaho and attended Clover Trinity Lutheran School. Um, following high school, Hil mom married uh, our father, Ira Archer of Buell, Idaho, and they were boys. God, uh, Chose to bless them with uh, eight children. Our oldest sister, Lynette. Uh, next came Janice, um, Leland, David, Kathy, Craig, myself, and then um, Brenda. Her, her life's true passion was Loving Jesus and loving her children, grandchildren, and many great-grandchildren. As many of you know, she was a member here at St. John's, having joined uh, here in the summer of 1959. Was anyone here then? By a show of hands? <laughs> God bless you. Um, she delighted in bringing God's word to others, serving the Lutheran Braille workers. For 35 years. And she cared in cared for the greater community, serving the Idle Falls Soup Kitchen for 40 plus years. So she is, thankfully, um, survived by all her children. She didn't have to um, 
go through the pain of losing uh, any of us. Uh, her four loving daughters, uh, Lynette Smith, whose husband uh, Lee is deceased, um, Janice Pereira, um, her husband Lloyd, um, Kathy Jennings, whose husband Cliff is deceased, and uh, Brenda Archer. And her uh, four loving sons, Leland Archer of Montrose, Colorado, his wife Sharon, David Archer uh, of Idaho Falls, Craig Archer of Phoenix, and his wife Lisa, and uh, I'm Bruce Archer, and my wife is Lucy Archer. Um, she has um, one sister remaining, Alma Halverfield, um, uh, currently in Sun City, and um, where she'll be joining the rest of her family soon, we believe. Um, at latest count, this was in October, so it could have changed. 21 grandchildren and 48 great grandchildren. Three more. Two more. 50 great grandchildren. Um, Yes, so she was preceded in death by her parents, um, brothers Hugo and Paul Meyer, and sister Irene Adolph, and her sister Helen, um, just this last year, who was 100. Um, My parents got divorced when I was uh, when I was nine, and um, I really um, I really caught from mom what um, what sacrifice was. Um, I don't know anyone who um, so selflessly and um, persistently and without fail um, put herself um, last and others before her. Um, just taught me the true meaning of love through sacrifice and. Um, there was nothing that she wouldn't have done for, for any of us children, grandchildren, or great-grandchildren. And um, um, I think I had something else to say, but I have forgotten. Thank you so much for being here and uh, celebrating um, our dear mother with us. Thank you, Bruce. As you were speaking, it, uh, it was a, just a reminder to me. It does touch our hearts to speak of someone. Uh, I remember Hilda as being hardworking, but I don't know if it's a phrase, but she was hard loving. She worked at it and she succeeded. And uh, she was a blessing to be around, that is for sure. In Hilda's baptism, there was a name placed upon her, and that is the name in which we worship today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In our Lutheran service book in the pew racks in front of you, we will sing together, When Peace Like a River. That's uh, hymn number 763.
Our first reading, reading chosen for today is the 23rd Psalm. You'll find it on the front of the bulletin today. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We also have two gospel lessons chosen for today. The first is from John, John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Jesus' words to us. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Our second gospel lesson is in John's gospel as well, in the 11th chapter, verses 17 to 27. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection. On the last day, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated. I have gotten off track here. Um, (laughs) I apologize. (laughs) We pray together, if you would join me. O God of mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness to Hilda and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus. You're likely familiar with the, uh, the lyrics 
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. For me, that was kindergarten class with uh, Mrs. Lutzinger, who turned 87 just this week. Like so many, this short hymn had significance in Hilda's formative years as well. Taught to love God's word, Hilda early on treasured the words that God gave us to make us certain of his love, a love that chases us down, that comes after us. Nearing 90 years of age, Hilda still found morning and evening reminders as she opened the pages of scripture and read God's word to herself. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. No wonder there was that sparkle in Hilda's eyes when she had time with someone she loved, for she was certain she was loved. She knew who she was, but more importantly, Hilda knew whose she was. In baptism, God claimed her as his very own child, even placing his name on her, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Hilda knew that as God made her his own, the death of Jesus became hers, and she knew she would not die eternally. In John's gospel, you heard just moments ago, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. You caught in there that discussion. Jesus asked Martha, whose brother Lazarus had died, and the one whom Jesus would raise just minutes later, Do you believe this? She said to the Savior, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. That, too, was Hilda's bold confession and belief. The resurrected life that Jesus promised will be Hilda's. Baptism not only gives us Jesus' death that we may not die eternally, but baptism also gives us the life that Jesus has. He who walked from the tomb, having conquered death for everyone. Jesus loves me. He who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let the little children come in. So the faith that God poured into Hilda early in life assured her that full forgiveness was hers in Jesus. For every time she fell short, his blood shed was the ransom price to buy her back from the devil's clutches, and Jesus' blood freed her to love God and to love others. Hilda so wanted those she loved to know this certainty for themselves. Her sons and daughters, her grandchildren and great-grandchildren were her delight. Family. Because Hilda truly believed that in Jesus, she had been made a permanent member of God's family. She longed and she prayed that her loved ones would know his love also. Her heart ached that others would sing these words and believe their simple yet life-changing truths. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. How far would God go to convey that love? He would walk straight to a cross to die in our place. But he would walk straight out of his tomb three days later because death could not hold him. As his forgiven child, it won't hold you either. In Jesus' name, amen. With gratitude, we sing really a prayer together now. It's hymn 
878, Abide With Me, and we'll sing all but verse 3. All but verse 3. I invite you to join with me in words that Hilda professed each time she was in worship with us, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the days of earthly life you granted to Hilda, for the grace bestowed in Christ Jesus, for her adoption and rebirth in holy baptism, and for all the love she was blessed to receive and the love she shared wholeheartedly. We entrust her to your mercy and pray for the sustaining comfort of your Holy Spirit for her family and friends. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join our voices together to pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 537, Beautiful Savior.
one quick announcement for you. A brief service of internment uh, will be uh, held right after this service at Fielding Memorial Park Cemetery. And uh, the address, if you're not familiar with that, is in the bulletin for you. And as we uh, hear our processional uh, music, How Great Thou Art, family, you are welcome to lead us out. If you'd like to stay a few moments for prayer, that's okay as well. So glad that uh, um, we could really rejoice in the Savior of Hilda and the great uh, uh, woman of faith that she, she was to us. <laughs> 